we're both, and I think the whole marketplace is probably in this position, we're, we're all pretty clear it's going to be a half percent in the next meeting, and we may be looking at definitely, we're, I think everyone's in agreement, another half a percent. The question becomes, how many rate rises? So I yeah. see um, Westpac and ANZ, I think it was, come out saying... Uh, yeah, uh, they two, revise them up. Two, revise up 200 basis points. So they're saying... Correct. Four lots of 50 base point rise before the end of this year. Yep. So where do you sit? Oh, I'm I'm continuing to pare back my expectations when the information comes in. If you'd asked me two or three months ago, we probably need to get to 3% or thereabouts. Cash rate. The official cash rate. And I thought, well, gee, the RBA's got to do a lot, all the rest of it. But on that point that we were just making about some evidence that the turning point in inflation is coming, the cooling in domestic demand which is which is happening in global demand, you know, that that near recession, if we can call it that in the US, let alone an actual recession. The fact that China's still softening with its lockdowns and its industrial production is very weak at the moment. Europe's being still hit really hard by gas prices because of course they can't get their gas from Russia for the reasons of the Ukraine war. So that's a tragedy for Europe. And that's a big part of the global economy. So that's a long way of saying I think that they I'm, a, I'm, I'm moving with Shane, who I've got a huge amount of respect for, that, okay, here we are at 1.35% today. They probably go 50 in their August meeting, so 1.85. They probably need to, they'll probably do one more 50 uh, in September. And then it becomes really ambiguous about whether they pause October, November and go in December or, you know, that last three months of the year is going to be, a, is very hard to call. Well, they'll wait for the October. They won't even know what they're doing. But they'll wait for the October year. ABS numbers too. Co- correct. That'll be, that'll be a really important part. And they're going to wait to see what happens to this unemployment rate. If the unemployment rate goes to 3.4, 3.4, 3.2, whatever, and that CPI number that we get for the September quarter in three months' time is very elevated, they'll probably then go again. But if there's evidence, some evidence that this, this, this information that we're talking about, that inflation globally is starting to turn, that you know, maybe unemployment stays at 3.5, ticks up to 3.6, 3.7, they might think, okay, not, not that that's a bad number, that's a great number, but it's the momentum that's important for the RBA. It's not necessarily the level of unemployment or the level of GDP. It's are we getting a turn up or a turn down? GDP is turning down. Everybody agrees with that. So they're saying uh, 3.75, then three, then two over the next three years. Correct. So we've got a slowing That's a in. problem. We've got, we've, well, it's an issue. It, yes, it's a potentially, and if they get that forecast wrong by being too optimistic and the outcomes even even a percentage point lower. So that's, that's, a that's, big deal. that's a big deal for, for GDP growth. And therefore, your implication for your unemployment rate. So rather than hanging around three and a half a bit, it goes to four or four and a half. Again, not catastrophic, but you don't want to then risk going to five and five and a half. You know, low unemployment, as we've been saying, is a good thing. You're thinking maybe between here and the end of this calendar year, definitely a pause in February. But between here, here and the um, end of this calendar year, maybe another one point two five percent. I'd, I'd hazard the S one point two five. So yeah. we're we're in that. I'll, I'll call it a range because I don't know whether they're actually going to move to two point five, two point seven five, yeah, yeah, or yeah. two point six. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way, it doesn't matter. Ten no, basis no, no, points. No, totally. But I, I reckon my my current forecast is that by year end we're going to be around two point five to two point seven five give or take, that we get to that sort of level. So a little bit less than I thought, not not a huge amount. They still they still have to hike. You know, as we said, the Fed, New Zealand, Canada, UK, even the European Central Bank uh, a, a short while ago has hiked for the first time in 10 years. So we've got the global hiking cycle. So the RBA has got to play that game in a, in a sense. Um, but then I think, yeah, they can afford to go on their summer holidays. They don't meet in January. Uh, they can just you know chill out and, and see what happens to the economy. What are consumers going to be spending in the Christmas period? You know that's when a quarter of all retail sales happen over Christmas. Are we going to be saying, "Gee, my, you know my cost of living is so bad, I'm you know not going to go out for dinner"? Or oh, the the Christmas turkey will be a bit smaller, or we won't I'm have. Not going on holidays. Uh, yes, or I'll, I'll, I'll have a local holiday, or I'll have a holiday yeah locally rather than in Bali, the Bali or. or you know, Hawaii or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll just go local. It's half the price and still take the kids out and we can do some nice things. But it's a very different uh, way of spending. So I think the RBA will probably then pause in January, come back in February, take a deep breath. Where are we? And they'll have the data. Have these rate hikes from 2022. Yep. Had a material impact. And if they find that consumers are pretty 
soft, as in not spending a lot of money, if they find that this, this inflation momentum that we're talking about globally is coming to pass and that the US is getting a couple of really weak month-on-month -month CPIs around zero because petrol's falling, it's a negative uh, in, in the US and it'll be here at some stage, we hope, um, that they can say, look, we can actually sit tight and we may have a period in 2023, a bit hard to forecast this far out, where we have a good six months where the RBA is on hold, They'll see what happens to the economy. Is that 2.5, 2.75 official interest rate enough to achieve our inflation objectives? And this, if it is, we might have this other period, which the RBA has a history of having a year with no rate changes. Yeah, and, and then we'll all get used to it. And then, and then people realise, hey, this rate's, oh, I prefer a low rate, but it's not, not killing me. I can still afford to buy a house. They'll be a little bit cheaper by, by then. And people will start, I've got my job. They'll step up and start buying.